insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 47, Nothing But Star Wars. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my lovely and well-appointed co-host, Michelle Whalen. <laughs> Hi, everyone. How are we doing today, sweetheart? I'm wonderful. And you, love? Doing good. We, uh, we're back from a well-deserved couple of weeks off for the holiday. Yep. Uh, we're back in the podcasting business again. Uh, I think we're going to kind of go a little off our regular format here. Right. To sort of recap some of the things that happened in our absence. Um, we're going to talk about our trip to Disney and uh, our experience at Galaxy's Edge, <clears throat> which was incredible. Did a lot of stuff down there. Then we're going to talk about the Rise of the Resistance ride which was another highlight of the trip. Then in our entertainment news, we have to talk about the Mandalorian season finale. Mm -hmm. yep. And uh, we will also do a discussion slash rant on uh, <laughs> That's Rise, <all> you. <laughs> Star Wars Rise of Skywalker. So uh, are we ready to get into it? Sure. All right, let's start. So one of the biggest highlights we had from our trip was Galaxy's Edge. So what were your overall impressions of Galaxy's Edge? I was thoroughly impressed. I know we've been talking about Galaxy's Edge for for months, pretty much since we've started doing our, our podcast. We, we've known about it. Um, you know, we, we really didn't expect to be visiting it as soon as as we, we were, you know, to opening, you know, you were pretty much convinced I'm um, waiting a couple of years before I even go. Yep. And here, you know, it opened during the summer. Um, we happened to be there within the first couple of weeks of Rise of the Resistance even being opened. Um, yeah, that opened uh, early December. Early December. So we were there at the end of December. So, you know, it really wasn't open very long. Um, and it was just amazing. It was just totally immersive totally you know the the pictures that people show and and the videos that you see just just don't do it justice um you know you turn one corner and there's something there and then you turn another corner oh my god did you see this did you see you know there's just so much to to take in um you know in comparison to pandora you know, at Animal Kingdom, like Pandora is, okay, this is kind of interesting, but if you haven't seen the movie in a gazillion years or really paid attention, you know, a lot of the stuff is just kind of like lost on you. Yeah. Whereas with Star Wars, you know, with Galaxy's Edge, just the <clears throat> the details of everything is So we, we you did know, compile amazing. a short video of some of the footage that we took. Let's uh, let's go ahead and play that. Okay. And uh, maybe you can sort of give us some impressions on to over top of it. Sure. So this is one of the little, you know, they have a, a little bazaar area. Um, this was one of the little snack areas. You, you walk by and, you know, the droid is, is cooking food. And then obviously you turn around and you see the freaking Millennium Falcon is, is amazing. Um, another store... Uh, and then, you know, the stormtroopers walking around are totally in character. You know, some of them, they won't even let you, you know, stop and take a selfie with them. You and know. they interact with you. They do as interact. As if you're 
like residents of the uh, planet. You're a resident of, of Batu. This was our breakfast. You know, very spacey looking, but normal food. Um, you know, a bunch of pod racers and and such. And then this was uh, one of the the droid areas. So just a bunch of different, you know, droids. And then you turn a corner, and you're like, oh, like, hey. <laughs> There's a ship, and there's another there's ship. There's another and, ship. <laughs> and another ship. And another <laughs> ship. And whoa, okay. That's really cool. You know, and then you you know, and then Kylo Ren's walking around and harassing And there is a whole storyline. If you if you stick around long enough and you talk to the right characters, there's a storyline to actually get involved with that gets you involved with the ride itself as a member of the resistance. Gotcha. Um Yeah, so you know, and then here's the the um, the food being cooked. Obviously, it's not really being cooked, but you know, it kind of yeah, gives that, the the illusion the, of it. Uh, the effect of them using a uh, um, pod race engine to actually cook the food, right, was right. just mind blowing. Yeah, and know? even we we noticed when we were leaving, uh, you know, they had like a little storage um, uh, area off to the side. And the storage area was actually, um, they had, uh, like, fake food in it, you know. So most people would walk by, you wouldn't even notice, you know. It was meant to kind of be like, this is the food storage area, when really it, it wasn't. It didn't right, hold anything, right. but it was just kind of interesting, like, even just walking past that, you know, was, was themed. Well, talk um, about, talk about the cast. What was, what was it about the cast that was impressive? The cast was, you know, first off, I knew that anybody that was a cast member in this area had been selected, had applied for it. You know, it wasn't like they just kind of got stuck there. These are, these are people that wanted to be there, that wanted to be part of this and if you work you for know, Disney, why wouldn't you want to be part of the Secure Star Wars fan? This <laughs> right, exactly. Awesome. You know, they they are residents of, of Batuu. Um, you know, when they greet you, it's rising sun. It's not, you know, good morning. Um, you know, when they when you go to pay for something, it's 12.25 credits. Right. They don't know what dollars are. Um, if you ask them about anything else in the park, they don't know because... They're on another planet. They're, you know... You, even even down to, like, the name tags. Right, their name tags. Like, the traditional, you know, Disney Park name tag, you know, has Disney, has their name, has, you know, what, um, you know, where their hometown is. Here, it was a very uh, uh, Star Wars-looking name tag with their name. I'm guessing there might have been other things on their name tag. Like, I didn't notice... You know any uh, uh, differences with with their types of right. of, of name tags and their um, costumes. Their costumes were were totally themed to the air. Even their rain ponchos yeah. were, you know, looked like a rain poncho like, that you would. They looked like the commando rain ponchos right. from Return of the Jedi. Right. So it, that that was just amazing. So it wasn't like they were just putting on a typical yellow, you know, so they thought about it from from head to toe. You know, you could even tell like the the female cast members, you know, they didn't just have their hair pulled back or or whatever. They had different um, you know, braids and stuff that were very ray looking or very, you know, Princess Leia ish, you know, with, with their hairstyles. Um, there was one cast member that was obviously a, a character of, of some sort from probably the Resistance, and she had, you know, purple or blue hair, um, you know, and she walked by me and she's like, love your hair, and I'm like, love yours, <laughs> you know, because we both had colored hair, um, you know, so very themed in it, again, from head to toe, like even their boots, you know, it, yeah. it's like they weren't wearing regular sneakers, you know, everybody was wearing, you know, a full, you know, costume, you know, head to toe. So, and as we showed... In the video, um, the decor is incredible. You had a number of life-size ships. Mm -hmm. You had um, the pod racer cooking area. Right, right. Um, you had <clears throat> on the on the ground itself. You have droid footprints mm -hmm. that were made by, by R2. R2 D2. Right. And there's an area that you have Gungan footprints. Mm -hmm. So you know. Little love the Jar Jar there, <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> um, the bathrooms. Tell us about the bathrooms. Oh my god, the ba It's so funny because 
you know, obviously, until you watch The Mandalorian, you never actually saw anybody, you know, in Star Wars go to a bathroom. So, you know, what do you expect it to, to look like? And you get to the restroom and you're like, yeah, this is totally what it would look like. It's very... um industrial you know mm -hmm. all metal you know browns and metals and and the 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 sink it's like a trough um, yeah. you know and these just metal plain pipe spigots coming out and the hair dryers that they have are all metal and it had that you know that aged weathered worn down look that you expect from the star wars universe right, right exactly Not the pristine clean mm -mm thing you would expect from right Disney. and and it was still a clean bathroom yes it was clean but, right you know. but it had that but that was like even even the uh the restaurant so the, right. the restaurant had the sliding doors right and the windows had this alien green gunk on them right pra painted on just for ambiance right right um so, so. it's dirty in a clean way right. you know that right. you get that that feeling that you're on this kind of you know not desert planet but you know just... it's, a, it's a rough neighborhood you're right, in right yeah. right right yeah so uh the other thing that was neat was the realism so you you lacked they had stores mm -hmm. but you lacked traditional merchandise in these stores right in it the was it was very interesting that you know because if you've ever been to disney you know that every area has some sort of gift shop or yep. something and there's usually something Disney-ish, something with, you know, a, a Disney label or, or something, uh, you know, on it. Um, and what was interesting was, you know, they had the one area that was kind of like the pet store. Yep. And it was basically all these plush animals, you know, that you could kind of adopt, you know. And then they had the, the toy, sh toy shop where they had the toys that basically, you know, were handmade looking you know right. so you know even though this isn't baby yoda this is just regular yoda but he has that you know so it's a it's a stuffed toy it looks right. like it's hand stitched right but uh, the same shop uh sold your um uh, the wooden figures the wooden toys right they had little wooden uh, mannequin type posable toys. posable toys that you ended up getting a Darth Vader. Yep. Um, they had instruments, musical instruments that Madison ended up getting. But it's um, stuff that's not packaged in right. It doesn't traditional, you know, right. Like, labeled stuff. You know, stuff. here you see, you know, you can see the label. It's just, you know, a very it's Yoda. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. nothing. You know, nothing else, nothing was... You don't see branding or anything like right, that. Right, nothing was, was wrapped up, you know, or in a box or anything. It was all loose, yeah, you know, yeah. like you would expect at a, a bazaar or a flea market so, type and it, thing. It, it lended itself to the realism. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, you would get the sound of ships in the distance. That kept freaking me you out. Know, You'd hear... Flyby. And I'm like looking and I'm like... There's, there's, yeah. there's literally nothing going, but but it it, it happened. Like, it, like it, you just you just missed it. Like right, it just like, went oh, out of sight. Right, right. Yeah. Um, then you'd hear ships landing at the spaceport mm -hmm. when you were in other areas of the of the yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, the styling and the architecture mm -hmm. spot on. It looks like a cross between Tatooine and mm -hmm. you know three or four other planets from Star right. Wars. Yeah. Um, and then you know. We talked about the costume troopers already. Mm -hmm. You had Kylo Rang. You had Ray was making appearances right, there. Right, right. Uh, the quick serve food. You know, even the names of the food. It was, right. Yeah, it was know, like morning, Rising Sun's breakfast or something. Right. And like it was, I don't even remember what like the egg was called, but basically it was like they had done it. Uh, the egg in like a muffin tin, yeah, and yeah. the 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 sausage was called something else. It was, it was the... you know, they played off as bantha food, or right, Something like right. that. So it's stuff from the universe, right? And then the freaking Millennium Falcon. I mean, you couldn't <laughs> you couldn't beat the Millennium Falcon. That was just you know, it was it was really epic. Just to kind of turn the corner, and you're like, it was. It oh was my god! And you could get up right on top of. Oh this. yeah, yeah. You, uh, you it could. wasn't one of these things in the distance that you couldn't get near. Right, because the, the smuggler's run ride, which unfortunately we 
did not go on. Right. Um, basically loops you uh, around. So that's, you know, if you, you know, if you go back and you see, um, you know, the one video and the photo of it, you see all the people, those are people waiting to, right. to get on the ride. Right. Um, but yeah, just amazing that you, you know, there it is. Yeah, that was, that was just too cool. Cause you could see it from high up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because when you come in, you're kind of on one level, and then, you know, you can kind of go down the stairs or go down a ramp to get to, like, a second level, and then it's like, wow. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it just, it's just there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's a lot of interactivity with the Disney Parks app. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a ability to scan and interact with objects. Right. We played around with it a, a little bit, um, where, because, again, a lot of their signs are... Um, somewhat in English and somewhat not. So when right. you use the app, it'll actually translate it for you. Right. So it uses the language of Star Wars Aravesh. Right. right. And the app itself will take a snapshot of it interacting with your camera. I was having issues. I was using an iPhone. Right. And that aspect of the app wasn't accessing my, mm -hmm. my camera for some reason, but it's supposed to access it. And then translate the Arabesh to English for you. Right, because when I was waiting online to get the one refreshments, they had the, the sign and I took a picture of it and it did end up translating it, it for me. Um, you know, the name of the, the restaurant that I was in and the soda, you know, and that was the other cool thing. You know, any picture that you saw, like the Coca-Cola label or a Sprite label or DeSante water, yeah. it was all written in the Arabesh. Arabesh, you know, so that's just yeah. kind of cool that, you know, Disney was able to partner with Coca-Cola to specially print bottles, yeah. you know, just for, you know, Star Wars, you know, um, Galaxy's Edge. And, you know, as typical with anything Disney, there is a lot of merchandising there. But like we said, with the, the shops in the marketplace, they're not overly labeled right but there's a number of other shops in there one is doc ondar's den of antiquities which mm -hmm. i have to say i walked into <laughs> and i was absolutely in awe well and that was the thing because i walked in there first right not knowing what it was and i walked in and i looked around and i went oh my god you have to go in here <laughs> it was because i knew because <laughs> it's so it's divided up into light side dark side mm -hmm. and then fringe elements and right. you could go in there and buy costuming stuff you right. can buy uh collectible stuff you they had bus mini bus in there mm -hmm. you could get i mean it was just lightsabers the things that you could buy in there they had the legends lightsaber so you right. could buy all of the existing lightsabers mm -hmm. that you had that they have uh you could buy accessories if you bought a lightsaber or you made your own lightsaber which we'll show you in a minute um, you could buy accessories for that. Right. You could buy. Um, they had Princess Leia wigs. Wigs. They had. And they her were like jewelry. You they had could her get jewelry. There. They had her dress, like yep. for adults, not yeah. for kids. They, you even know, had, they had, a, had another section, another area uh, where right, it was kid stuff. Right. But this was just like the adult stuff. And they had uh, a Bluetooth comlink right. that you could get that works with your phone. It was just so much cool stuff that they had mm -hmm. there. Yeah. <laughs> Now, some of the areas did require reservations. Mm -hmm. So why don't you talk a little bit about the reservation areas? So there were two, well, the, the reservation areas, there were there were only three areas that you need the, the reservations for. Uh, one is Olga's Cantina. Um, so that's the only, they don't have a sit-down restaurant yet. Um, and the cantina is actually just a bar because at one point we had made reservations for it. And then when I realized it was basically just a place to drink um, and they do serve non-alcoholic drinks as well. I canceled the, the reservations because we were actually really looking for something dinner wise. Right. Uh, unfortunately, we never actually made it to Olga's Cafe uh, Cantina. Um, it was kind of down an, an alleyway and we just never, you know, for as many hours as we were there, we just never uh, made it there. And that's a testament to how large the area is. Right. That we just, by the time we discovered where it was, we were like, oh, it was, we're we were so exhausted tired. and tired at that point because we had just gone back to pick up a couple of things. Right, right. Uh, then obviously uh, they have two areas where you can make things. Right. Um, you have the Droid Depot, um, which that one, um, we actually made, we weren't even going to make droids. Um, we 
manage to get a reservation last minute. For that one, they do actually take walk-ins uh, as well. So they actually have two different lines. So if you have a reservation, you check in with one of the cast members and then you, you go online. If you're a walk-in, they have another line and basically you're kind of like the fill-in area. Um, so with that, they, you know, they call you in and they basically just have... Um, you know, different spots at this table. Um, so what you do is you go and you pick out um, which type of droid you want. There's two kinds that you can make. You can make a BB unit or an R2 unit. Um, and they have all the various pieces, you know, and, and it shows you if you're making this one, this is what you need to pick out. If you're making this one, this is what you need to pick out. And they have various colors. So, you know, you could mix and match if you want. So what did you make? So I made R2 and he's purple. Because <laughs> he can be, I can't get. And he went him. to sleep. And he went to sleep. We need to wake him up. Hold on, let me wake <clears> up. <throat> wake up, droid. There we go. Let's see. Is he awake now? Oh, oh sure is. <laughs> <laughs> so now you are controlling him with the yeah, remote so control. Yeah, so there is a remote control that that comes with it too, and he can obviously move forward and backward. And he can turn side to side. Um, I can turn his head. Now, there was an option where you could pay an additional fee to get um, a, personality. a personality. So that button, when you press it, obviously, <clears throat> since I didn't pay for that, he doesn't have a personality. And that's what he said. <laughs> so, And for the, for the R2 units, there's a boatload of other accessories yeah, there's, that you can there's get. other accessories where um so like in the front here like these were my options i only had black or, or white or red um but they did sell extra purple accessories so even though he has a purple head i could get purple things to to put elsewhere plus they also had like a drink attachment right so like you could it make could them be like r2 like, from return of the Jedi. right exactly so that that was really that was really uh cool um and again we lucked out we just kind of were sitting around you went on the app um now for that you actually had to go through the website you didn't have to you didn't go through the app i don't think yes it was a website right so that you had to go through the, but the what website was, great was you know there was this line of people and it was <laughs> yeah. probably a 45 minute to an hour wait in, as a as a walk-in right and we, and we just, fired up the app we got a uh you know a reservation yeah, so like an hour from then and just yeah so in. if you're you're planning on going you know and you're not sure you know check obviously that um, so that was kind of a, a, the cute little uh, addition that we that we didn't know that we were going to do. Right. Um, but the last reservation, uh, the uh, thing that you needed a reservation for is Savi's Workshop. And right. that one we had actually tried months ago. It's, it's basically just like the dining reservation. You can make the reservation 180 days out. You do have to do it through the website. You can't do it through through the app. Um, and when we had tried to make the reservations, they didn't have anything available for the day that we were going to be down there. And it was like, all right, well, I guess we're not making lightsabers. No problem, whatever. Um, and then I guess it was about a month, a little bit, about a month maybe before about we that, yeah. we got notification that our one <clears throat> wait list for Hilton Head right. came through. And, of course, Baby Yoda was already out and about by then. And we said, oh, well, thanks to the, you know, the gods of Baby Yoda, we got that. If only we could make a reservation to make lightsabers. I went online and they had a boatload open so i don't know if it was just because of the holiday season and they made more available or or what but we managed to score reservations and the way that it works here is that you get you can have one person make it and one person as a guest so of course it was like all right well if daddy makes one and maddie goes and watches then mommy has to sit outside and and wait or if Daddy and Maddie make one, then Mommy gets to go and watch, and then Mommy feels left out because she doesn't have a lightsaber to play with at home. So we all got to make... Yes, we did. <laughs> so it was a very Merry Christmas and a Happy Hanukkah uh, to all of us. So here is a little video of us making our lightsabers. The blue crystal flavored by great Jedi Master 
Master Obi Wan Kenobi, his apprentice Anakin Skywalker, and Rey. Green, Qui Gon Jinn, Ahsoka Tano, Master Yoda himself, and Luke Skywalker. And Violet, a rare, beautiful crystal. I had to. <laughs> So you notice the holders that these are in are reminiscent of the Kyber crystal holders from Rogue One. Don't mind R2. <laughs> I had a lot of fun with Baby Yoda on this trip. <laughs> So at this point, our lightsabers are already built. Yes. And this is where we're going to activate them. Fight to the death, no. <laughs> I was just going to do that. <laughs> I forgot I did that. Because <laughs> you just spent a lot of money on this. <laughs> So that was our experience making lightsabers. And I have to say it was, it was cool. It was fa briefer than I thought it would be. Right. And maybe that's why so many spots opened up right, right. because they cut they down kind of streamlined a little. on but the time. It was, you know. it was almost a spiritual experience, the way that they tell you mm -hmm. the story right. and the way they walk you through it. And they really right. indoctrinate you mm -hmm. into a lot of the mythos and, and I think they do a really good job with the, the oh, whole process. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I think the the cast members that that were with us, you know, were very helpful, and you know, and just you know, g gave you a sense that you know this was kind of an important thing that you were doing. Yeah. You know, when you you got there, you checked in. They gave you like this little menu, basically, that said, "Okay, here's one of the four types." Right. You know, so you get to to pick which. One of the four, they give you a, a lapel pin, um, you know, that designates which one of the four f factions or, or types that you're you're trying to do. And then when you get there, you know, the other 
cast members are there to, to help you and they take out, you know, so then even though you picked a certain type, you still can there's modify two it. sets of kit that right. you can pick from you know, so like, in between. Right. So there's, you know, one, you know, two different types of this, four different types of this, two different types of this. So which one did you pick? So this is my... Oh, God, really heavy. Ugh. <laughs> purple to go with my so so that is the hilt you made that hilt you picked all the pieces for that right there were two different types of of uh bottom two different pipe uh types of center uh two different types you know of tops and then obviously you know my kyber crystal i picked you know the the purple one so which one did you pick you could pick peace and justice power and control elemental nature or protection and defense i think i was protection and defense mm, I, think I think you that's were what yeah. I was. yeah so i was trying to kind of go more like princess leia's lightsaber um but they didn't have anything so i just kind of went with oh this is kind of cool that is a cool looking saber i like the design thank you and it's it's heavy it's heavy as, as you know, the blade itself isn't that heavy, but the hilt is definitely... You and the, the blades themselves are removable, so if you push in and turn, you can pull the blade out. It's mad at me. It doesn't work. Ooh, push, push and turn. There we go. So, so this is very light. This is, you know, almost like nothing, but this is still... You know, a good, I don't know, 15 pounds, 20 pounds. It's probably about three or four pounds. No, it's more They're than not that heavy. Yeah, okay, five pounds. I would say five <clears throat> pounds. Um, but the interesting thing is, is that you can open these up. You can pull the kyber crystal out and you can replace the kyber crystal. And depending on the color of the crystal you put in the saber determines what color your blade is. The blade itself has all the LED colors in it. Oh, okay. So you don't have to change your blade to change the color. You just, just change the, the crystal. Oh, okay. Good to know. And the crystals themselves have a signal that they send to the saber, and the saber then talks to the blade and tells the blade what color. So it's it's pretty sophisticated. I really, really enjoyed it. So <clears throat> you just sunk down. Didn't you? I know I did. Thanks. Thanks for noticing. Um, <laughs> so... It is uh, $199.99 to build the saber plus tax. You do have to pay before you go in. Uh, it's one lightsaber per builder per experience. So you can go in multiple times, but you need to have an appointment each time to go in. Right, right. Uh, and does... that was something that they weren't taking walk-ins <clears throat> right. um, when we right. were there. So you had so... to have an appointment. Mm -hmm. uh, the carrying case is included, which is nice. It's a nice padded case to protect it. Mm -hmm. It's got a shoulder strap to it. Uh, there's a ton of other things. You can get a <clears throat> um, belt clip and different crystals and stuff like that. Um, and like we said before, it is limited to one builder and one guest. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, I think the experience itself was was just phenomenal. Right. Really oh, was. absolutely. Absolutely. So after that, we did talk about the Drew Workshop mm -hmm. already. So we can skip that part. Uh, a couple of quick things on the droid workshop, though. We did, uh, the droids were $99.99 mm -hmm. each. Uh, it comes with a carrying box. There's personality uh, chips that you can get for them. Uh, again, this is limited to one builder and one guest uh, as well. Uh, and at least one person in the party must be 14 or older. Mm -hmm. And you, there are, again, extra accessories. They even had like a backpack that a lot of people were getting. And I think that it was like, if you did that, it was $149 Right. with that. And I think you got the personality included, you know, with that too. So, right. so that was all the stuff with, uh, two black spire outposts and all mm -hmm. the cool stuff, except rise of the resistance, the ride. <laughs> so tell us, just briefly tell us about that. And then we have a video for that as well. Wow. I just, words can't describe it. It was the most amazing attraction I've ever been on, you know, in my life. You know, we've talked about before um, 
back years ago, Vegas had a Star Trek experience ride. Right. And that was just kind of like amazing because you kind of started out in this one area and all of a sudden you're on the ship and you're like, how'd I get here? And they take you to a shuttlecraft and, you know, the shuttlecraft basically takes you back to Vegas, you know? So that was always like the most phenomenal ride we had ever done you know, Disney has some, you know, awesome attractions and things like that, but nothing that ever kind of matched that. Well, now this has gone well beyond, you know, you want to talk about immersive, you want to talk about, you know, uh, just amazing from, from start to finish. There was no slow part, <laughs> you know, really. Yeah. Um with it, the, just the queue lines and, you know, and, and walking through things and, and the props that they had, you know, to, to look at. And, and, you know, there, it wasn't, you know, you didn't have to have anything to interact with, you know, just looking at everything uh, yeah. was just incredible. And then, you know, the cast members, you know, you kind of start out and it's, you know, resistance fighters and it's like, okay, come on, we got to get you here. Da, 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 da. And then all of a sudden you end up, you know, on a Star Destroyer, and now you have First Order uh, uh, cast members. And, and it's the only time you'll see Disney cast members that aren't nice to and you. And they are mean. Like, I was expecting them to, like, hit you they, or something. They did they, not break character. They didn't break character at all. When people were laughing, it was like, stop laughing, get in line, be quiet. Yeah. You know, you were like... What? Yeah. You know, it, it definitely helped. So, so we do have a video. Okay. Um, it's not the entire ride, but it is a good chunk of it. The ride is about 18 minutes long. Right. So From start to, to finish, there's like three different parts, you know, to the, the right. ride. So you so. go through several scene transitions mm -hmm. that are done almost seamlessly. It's yeah. It's just... You you literally feel like you're in the movie. Mm -hmm. it's so absolutely, good. absolutely. And this, before we start, just the special effects. Oh my god! Okay, so you see laser bolts flying through the air, right. hitting and striking walls, and the walls themselves exploding right. and sparking. Right. Um, and honestly, thank God I took video because there were things I missed yeah. going through that now that I've watched, you know, the, the video clip, you know, it's like, Oh my God, I totally missed that. Or, you know, I missed whatever was being said because I was just yeah trying to take everything in. You know, I, I definitely think it's one of those rides you have to go on a couple of times yeah, to catch. Well, yeah. <laughs> so let's take a look at the video here. <laughs> BB-8, prep the ready room for recruits. Commander 9 Num, please report back to ITS cockpit. Let's get you on your way to the general. 
stand clear. Dead doors opening now.
down to the escape pod base. Those droids are programmed to return you to Batu. Hurry and don't get caught. Lieutenant Beck will guide you. Recruits, for your safety, stay seated with seatbelt securely fastened. Keep hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the transport and supervise your children. What the? Tell them it's a prisoner transfer. <laughs> There's a clear path to the turbo lifts at the end of the hallway. Turn right. A probe droid. You're lucky it didn't spot you. Take those turbo lifts and stay out of trouble. Hey, you're not authorized. Wait, the ghost of the prisoner. We have a breach in most of it at least uh just incredible it was it, they they combined probably a half a dozen ride technologies together mm-hmm. 
for yeah. an yeah. incredible experience. Yeah, <laughs> the, the whole trackless system, you know, we were going backwards for a good portion of it. You know, there were people, you know, the, that we saw in front of us that they were going, you know, forward. And you got all these cars moving around, you know, at the same time going down a, a corridor and stuff. And, you know, you go in the lift and you're like, oh, my God. And you get raised up kind of quickly. And, you know, in the back of your mind thinking, OK, what goes up must come down. Yep, yep. But, you know, I'm not really thinking that. I'm just going, OK, well, if we went up nicely, maybe we'll go down down nicely and <laughs> that was not the case and probably if i knew that there was some sort of fall i probably i don't know i think i would have had a hard time justifying going on it yeah. so i think that was good <laughs> for you know and it, was, it was fairly gentle you know it was jarring because you weren't expecting it right right it wasn't that high it wasn't like tower of terror where you were doing you know, 30, you know, so many, feet. you know, so many story, right. you know, it 13 was, stories. No, You're only doing. was about eight to 10 feet. Yeah. But it had an it was, awesome it was enough. effect. Awesome effect. <laughs> awesome effect. <laughs> so when we come back, we will talk about our entertainment news. We'll talk about uh, the Mandalorian season finale. Mm-hmm. So uh, Mandalorian has run its eight course episode for season one. And it opened up with uh, our scout troopers. Uh, a little bit of a comedy routine at the beginning the there. The jerks that they are. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, Baby Yoda got a little abuse there. Sure did. And there were a lot of people that were pissed off that, yeah. that poor Baby Yoda was, was getting beat up. But you know what? They The scout troopers got it in the end. So, they, you they know. They did. They did. <laughs> So we got uh, some more Mandalorian lore came mm -hmm. out of it, which yeah. was nice. Yeah. Um, you got to see his face. You got to see his face. Um, you got to see IG-11 actually really shine in the episode. Yeah, yeah. Which was nice. You know, he's an overprotective nanny mm -hmm. and uh, certainly proved that. Uh, you got to find out where Kara came from. Mm -hmm. She's from, from Alderaan, which explains why she's... Uh, a little pissed at the imps for uh, blowing her planet up. Right, So I could right. totally understand that. I could totally understand and relate, yeah. <clears throat> um, we find out the Mandalorian actually has a name. He's not just Mando. Right. He's Din Djarin. Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully he'll actually go by that name moving forward. Um, <clears throat> we also see another flashback, and this time probably the most extensive. Some footage that we've seen before in the flashback, but we see... The consequences of right. the droid separatist raid on his home. Right. And basically, <clears throat> you know, obviously we always knew he had some sort of hatred towards droids. This kind of, you know, you saw it, but then you saw how he got saved and right. how he ended and up. how he became a Mandalorian. Yeah. And how he became, you know, all of that. So uh, we also find out from the armor that uh, she was the sole survivor of the aftermath of his breakaway mm -hmm. of the Mando's breakaway. Uh, she recognizes the child was, is a Jedi. Mm -hmm. and she makes some references there. Um, and, uh, she also makes the Mandalorian and the child baby Yoda, a clan of two. Right. And the Mandalorian owns a signet, earns a signet now. Mm -hmm. Um, so basically, she he's his dad until he can find someone else to protect him, which I yep. thought was kind of neat. Yeah. <clears throat> um, what else did we learn? We learned uh, we learned how explosive uh, an IG-11 droid can be mm -hmm. and how many stormtroopers he can take out. Right, right. Uh, we also learned the interesting reveal of uh, the dark saber. Right. We see we see Moff Gideon survive his his crash, which I got to say that fight itself, where you know the Mando gets his jetpack, right, isn't fully trained on it, but knows enough to right. take down the the Tie Fighter, right. That was kind of cool. That was pretty cool. Um, but we learn about the uh, the Dark Saber, so mm -hmm. that I'm guessing is probably going to play a huge role in, in next season, season two. Yeah. So all in all, I think. Uh, the season finale, even though we ran into a couple of, uh, you know, needed slowdowns in the middle of the season there for right. some character development right. and introductions. I think the overall, the eight, eight mm -hmm. episode season was fantastic. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Any final thoughts on the Mandalorian? 
It was awesome. Okay. I won't argue. <laughs> the other thing we did get to see during the break was the Rise of Skywalker. So what are your thoughts on Rise of Skywalker, dear? Okay. So I went in with it, into it, hoping it was going to be better than The Last Jedi. And that was really all my my expectations. You know, I, I had heard that they were basically going to try and, you know, wrap everything up and, and, you know, explain various things that they hadn't. And, you know, I was just going in and enjoying it for what it was. I wasn't, you know, I didn't have, I didn't have any information of what the storyline was or any of the spoiler stuff that, that you had. I just wanted to kind of go with it with, you know, for what it was. Um, I cried a lot. There were definitely moments that, that had me emotional and, it was the movie that the 10 year old me who saw return of the Jedi wanted to see. Yeah. And that's, and for me, I loved it. You yeah. know, it was, I, I, you know, okay. Loophole this and loophole that or whatever, you know, it was 10 year old me who went and saw return of the Jedi with my dad. This is the movie, you know, that 10 year old me wanted to, wanted to see. Fair point. And that was, you know. Now, I will say, you know, my expectations going into it were similar to yours. Mm -hmm. I had wanted it to be better than Last Jedi, mm -hmm. which honestly wasn't hard to accomplish. <laughs> um, Solo was better than Last Jedi. <laughs> I had wanted it to sum up the saga. Mm -hmm. And... And that was really it for my expectations going in. Mm -hmm. And when I walked out, I was satisfied. Mm -hmm. Okay. And my reaction walking out was, wow. Right. Now, with the uh, benefit of hindsight, I can go back and I can nitpick on all the various things. And, and yeah, when I, when I wrote my notes up on this, I wrote up a rant. You did. Um, and Because it says Joe's rant on, on the notes. And... Uh, <laughs> Yes. Just in case you were And I'm wondering. not going to rant on the podcast here. Okay. I will leave it in the show notes so you can go and see all the issues that I have with it. Mm -hmm. um, it was better than Last Jedi. Mm -hmm. It ended the saga. Mm -hmm. So it accomplished the two things that I was looking for it to do. Did it do it in a way that I would have done it? No. Did It, it did clear up a number of things that were irking me from last Jedi. Right. Which I appreciate that. Um, but uh, you know, it's over and done with now. Mm -hmm. The saga itself is over. I would have liked to have seen it go a different way, mm -hmm. but it didn't. Uh, I'm not going to harp on it anymore. Um, I, I, I don't want to be one of those toxic star Wars fans who thinks he knows everything and could have done a better job. Right. Um, I think we got too much of that out of Last Jedi. It carried over to this, and it doesn't help the genre. It doesn't help the community. It doesn't help anybody. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to harp on that. Uh, I will say that it was it met my expectations, mm -hmm. um, and leave it at that. Um, I think there were things that could have been done differently, things that could have been done better. Mm -hmm. um, I don't necessarily like the villain that they came up with i think that could have been done better okay but you know all in all i think it was a better movie than last jedi okay and we'll leave it at that wow yeah i because we're running late here and i really <laughs> didn't have the half hour i needed to go into my rant Joe's special edition, um, episode 47.2. Well, I literally have like Joe's, four pages yeah, of rant we here. Yeah, we don't would have been here for another that. hour of, of it. Uh, but, so yeah. <laughs> my, I'll go over my summary, okay, because I just scrolled down those four pages to my summary. <laughs> the movie's a, a hot mess from the opening crawl. It's bouncing all over the place. There's too much stuff crammed into it. Uh, it was a tribute to the fans uh, who really were undeserving of such a tribute. Because the fans themselves turned this into a toxic waste dump after Last Jedi. Mm. 
Um, it was the best way to end a series of forgettable throwaway sequels. Uh, Cause you could literally take these last three movies, ignore them, pretend they never existed. And the saga would be better off that way. Mm. I don't think you added anything to the saga with these last three movies. Okay. Um, and a big thank you to Disney for ruining my childhood with this series. But you know, other than that, they're making money hand over fist. But yet you liked Galaxy's Edge. Galaxy's Edge was awesome. So I, I I think for us, if we had gone to Galaxy's Edge first and then watched the movie, you would have been like, <laughs> Well, and, and you know, I blame Disney for this, and right. it's not all Disney's fault, because right. Disney's proven that it's capable of making good Star Wars. Mm-hmm. You see that in The Mandalorian. Mandalorian. Absolutely. You saw that in Rogue One. Mm-hmm. If you get the same people that made those to make the rest of your Star Wars movies, I think you'll be spot on. Right. The problem is the people that you have making them and the decision makers that you have are not doing the the franchise Mm -hmm. justice. Right. Well, and and I think there have been a number of things that have come out now where executives have said, you know, John Favreau is really kind of the next George Lucas, like he really should be well, handling Favreau you and Filoni, I think, are the two a of them together. Team. Yeah, I think that's where mm. you kind of need to. All right, if we need to go on to the next Star Wars thing, I agree. Let them I be, would love to see him know, deco- be part uh, of it. direct the next one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I'm okay with it not being a Star Wars movie going forward, I would love to see them do something from the Old Republic era. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, You know, the game that I play is an Old Republic game, and I Mm -hmm. think there's so much story that could be told And that's the thing, is that, you know, for you, because you read the books and the comics and, and, you know, all the, 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 you know, you have so much knowledge of various characters and things like that, or someone like me who only you know, watch the movies and that's my base. I, you know. Well, and that's another criticism I lodge at Disney with Mm -hmm. these, this latest trilogy is they went out of their way to explain a lot of these things in the novels and Mm -hmm. the comics and the visual dictionaries and all the supplemental stuff that 2% of the people are going to see. Right. And, and then they put, they put you in the middle of a story in the movies Mm -hmm. And you don't know what's going on. Who's this? Who's that? Why right. are you doing this? Where are we at here? You don't know any of that stuff if you didn't read all the other stuff. Right, right. And as a result, it's a very disjointed, jarring sensation watching these movies and not knowing these things. Mm-hmm. Um, and and again, I blame the fans. Mm-hmm. Because one of the first things that Disney did when they bought Lucasfilm and they, they took over right. ownership was they decided to make all the old novels legacy and non-canon. Right. And all the fans got upset about that. Right. So to make up for that, Disney decided to make the new novels canon. Right. And those new novels fed into the movies. Well, only a small portion of the people read those novels right, and understood re- any of the impact right, in the movies. Everybody read all the old stuff, not right. the new stuff. So what happens is you just sit down and you watch this movie and you're introduced to the Knights of Ren and you have no idea who they are. Right. You see them, you see reference to them in the first movie. They're glossed over in the second movie. And then the third movie, they get their butts kicked by Kylo Ren as if, you know, they're a bunch of street thugs, you know, in leather. Mm-hmm. So they, it, like... There's a complete disconnect with mm. the way that they use these things. So, anyway, uh, obviously it's doing well at the box office, so it can't be that bad, right? right? Mm-hmm. So, it's the end of the saga, and that's all I can say. But I think that's all we had. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're a little over an hour into it right now, so I think we give our contact information. We come back next week, and we go back to our regular format. Sounds good. So please uh, reach us at uh, via email at comments at insightsintothings.com. At Twitter, at insights underscore things. On YouTube, you can catch our videos at youtube.com slash insights into things. On the web at www.insights.com. 
insightsintothings.com. And you can catch our audio feed at podcast.insightsinentertainment.com. And then on Facebook at facebook.com backslash insight into things podcast. And I think that's it. That Another is it. Another one in the books. May the force be with you. And also with you. <laughs>